Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Come on over, baby, whole lot of shaking going on. Yes, I said, come on over, baby, baby, you can't go wrong. We ain't faking, whole lot of shaking going on. Well, I said, come on Hello, over, infidels. Baby. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Why am I playing Jerry Lee Lewis at a time like this? The answer is, why not? Is it time for me to drop the Vegas shooting story? You want to move on? Uh, there was a caller to the show yesterday who thought that there were multiple shooters. Huge story. It's up everywhere, worldwide, being discussed. Do you think the witness was credible? Were there any flaws in her story? Do you think the multiple shooter theory has any legs? Do you think that there's a huge conspiracy here, or was it just a crazy gun nut who went nuts? I know I'm not supposed to ask the question, but hey, what the heck, I'm that kind of guy. Was he just a crazy gun nut who went wild, or was there more to the story? At the same time, I'm asking you this question about this story, and we will replay a Vegas survivor named Gail who says she heard multiple shooters. She was there, you weren't. Uh, I'm going to also talk about something else, other things. There are other things, other things. And again, we have open lines available from Las Vegas. KBET is my affiliate there for three live hours. If you are um, a member of the Las Vegas Police Department and know something but are afraid to say it, or a member of a hospital staff who has treated the bullet wounds, who cares to call this national show and tell us something about the uh, wounds, size of the rounds, whatever, 855-400-SAVAGE is the phone number. But today I'm sort of distracted by Jerry Lee Lewis for some weird reason. I don't know whether it's my survival mechanism kicking in, where I've had enough of madness and I'm going back to uh, true madness, which was rock and roll when I was a little boy. I was watching a show last night done, done by Mike Judge. What has Mike Judge done? He's fabulous. Robert, you just mentioned it before. Beavis and Butthead. So Mike Judge did a semi-animated film on, on Jerry Lee Lewis for 30 minutes. I, I caught it by accident. So it was like a mixture of the real crackers sitting in their chairs and then shifting over to the animated crackers sitting in their chair, but with their voices. I was so fascinated by it because that was the true voice of America. The true voice of America is not the late-night comedian who's a drug addict and a loser and a liar and a crybaby, a faker through and through. The true voice of America is the voice that those TV guys fear and hate so much. It's the cracker on the rocking chair in the South. The guys who actually know how to shoot guns. The guys who produce sons who are in Afghanistan and Iraq so that those fools can uh, talk and shoot their mouths off at night. That's why I like the cracker. Because the cracker is the real American, by the way. You don't even know what I'm talking about. It's not saltines. This is the savage nation. A shooter was living a secret life. Well, so am I leading a secret life. What do you think? You know what I do 21 hours a day? I don't have 5,000 guns, and I'm not plotting anything maddening. But everyone has a secret life. When they think it's a secret life, Fox News says he had a secret life. Let's hear a clip to Listen to this one. Investigators have spent the last 72 hours combing through the life of 64-year-old Stephen Paddock to produce a profile of someone I will call disturbed and dangerous. What we know is Stephen Paddock is a man who spent decades acquiring weapons and ammo and living a secret life, much of which would never be fully understood. You know, this guy, he's the sheriff, right, of Las Vegas. He has an eerily reminiscent voice of guess who. I just heard it. I have the best ear in the history of, of the media. Everyone loves Raymond. Who is that guy? Identical. Identical voice. I don't know his name, the actor's name. I... Ray Romano sounded like Ray Romano. The minute I say Ray Romano, I think of Romano cheese, which I always prefer to, to Parmesan cheese. You could see already where my head is at. If my mind's already drifting from this story because I cannot take any more pain, it means your mind is drifting from it. So I'll ask you again. 
Is it time for me to drop the Vegas shooting story and get silly or go to something else? Oh, let's just move on. There's nothing there. It's just a crazy white guy with guns, and it's time to rein in these guns, right? Wrong. What's the answer? Well, we'll figure the answer out together. And I'm still thinking about Jerry Lee Lewis. I don't know how he married a 13-year-old cousin in those days, number one. Married her. His first tour in England was he, was, he went with his 13-year-old cousin as his wife, and he didn't go to jail. Those were different times. And then the cracker sitting on the porch said, well, yes, in those days, why, we used benzodrines, doxamphetamines. We took them like candy. We traded uh, reds for blacks. How is this guy still alive in the 80s? You mean my clean living is not going to work out? All of this towing the middle line is just a waste of time? I don't know the answer at the end of the day. All I know is I wrote a lot of health books, and I followed the advice the best I could. And I guess I'm here. I mean, it must be working somehow. I know I never liked drugs particularly. I hated them, as a matter of fact. Now, here's the question. Was this cracker on drugs, the shooter? Yes, he was on drugs, the kind of drugs your mother uses, the kind of drugs that are used by uh, folks at ABC, CBS, and NBC on a daily basis. That's right. Now you know why the media is so full of you-know-what, because the most of them are drug addicts. In order to numb themselves from the filth that they're putting out, in order to numb themselves from the garbage that they're putting into the minds of America and the world, in order to numb themselves from the conscience that plagues them once in a while, they're all drug addicts. I can guarantee you 99.9% .9 true that most everyone in Hollywood is a drug addict of one kind or another, legal or illegal. Well, so is the shooter. So I'd rather talk about pill control than gun control. I'd rather talk about controlling SSRIs uh, than gun control. I'd rather talk about doctors like the one in Henderson, Nevada, who gave him a prescription that we know of, one doctor, 50 10 milligram Valiums, which are so psycho controlling, it's unbelievable. Why did he need, need to numb himself so heavily before the shooting? Was he mind controlled? Was he a setup? I don't know. Do you think I know? I don't know. I don't really know. If I knew, um, I wouldn't be in the radio business, not. I would be in the radio business because it's the place to go if you know something. So, guys, if you're out there, ladies as well, in, the, in, in Las Vegas or you've traveled elsewhere or you're in the Secret Service or the CIA or the NSA and you know something and you want to say something and you can't take it anymore because you know that it's all a big lie, go ahead, make our day. Call 855-400-SAVAGE. That story is not going away nor should it. It is the 911 of this generation. You heard me. Mark it down. Michael Savage just said it again. What happened in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas. What happened in Vegas is the 911 of our time. Maybe not in terms of numbers of people killed, but in terms of horror and shock. Yes, it is. Phone number is 855 4728. Here we go. A Hollywood story just jumped up on the Drudge Report. I don't believe it. I went searching for my link and it's gone. And look what's there. Weinstein accused of sex harassment lashes out at NRA and Trump. <laughs> They're eating their own now. They're eating their own in Hollywood. Now, why would they attack a man so nice as Harvey Weinstein? He's known to be an unbrusque man. He's known to be one of the kindest, most gentle boys from Flushing, New York ever created. Decades of sexual harassment accusations against Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> and Harvey Weinstein is one of the biggest gun grabbers on the planet. Have you not figured out how this all works? Have you not figured out, well, there used to be a saying, I can't say it exactly because it's a family show, and it's got a little bit of old uh, Yiddish in it. It goes like this, the bigger the klafka, the bigger the fill in the blank, because I can't say the other word. Meaning, the bigger the cross, the bigger the uh, you-know-what. So in other words, what that means is the more they display their liberalism, uh, the more you know that behind it there's something other than what they're displaying. Let's put it to you that way. Two decades ago, the Hollywood producer, Harvey Weinstein, instead he had her sent up to his room where he appeared in a bathroom. Ugh, what a disgusting thought. Beverly Hills Hotel for the young actors expected to be a business man. Instead he had her sent up to his room. I'm reading from the New York Times, obviously you can't sue me where he appeared in a bathrobe and asked if he could give her a massage. <laughs> what a come on, that is a fat white guy asking if he give you a massage or she could watch him shower. That would be exciting. I'm sure Ashley Judd was dying to watch Harvey, Wein <laughs> Harvey Weinstein shower. How do I get out of the room as fast as possible without alienating Harvey Weinstein? Ms. Judd said she remembers thinking. 
Then there's another one and another one. So, all right, so look, we know this. Everyone who achieves anything in the world is sexually driven. Let's start with that. If they're not, they're lying. So there's nothing to that story. He's a Hollywood producer, and he tried to seduce young actresses. That's a shocking story. What do you think Hollywood is built upon? Seduction. First, they seduce the, the girls and boys. Then they seduce you, the audience, with the girls and boys they seduce in order to keep you sitting in the chairs and watching their, their softcore pornography. That's all. What do you expect? This guy has a face for what he does, though. You look at that face. What a doll he is. I'd hate to get on the wrong side of Harvey Weinstein on a New Year's Eve. I'll tell you that. Now, what are we talking about? The shooting now? Hollywood will do this movie. Oh, you know who they're going to cast in this role. Who's going to play the shooter? If, if Harvey Weinstein, let's put it this way. If Harvey Weinstein is going to do the movie on the, on the Las Vegas slaughter, who would he cast as the shooter? Number one. And would he have a, a couple of Confederate flags in the hotel room that weren't there? And let's say a few American flags. And to add a little drama, Harvey, you'd probably make him a returning war veteran who has PTSD. Right, Harvey? What else would you do, Harvey, in order to make sure America doesn't know the truth? I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. And if you're not here, you are really stupid. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. zany day this news just came out i can't go to jerry lee lewis are you ready for what i'm about to tell you this came out minutes ago it's breaking news i'm, I'm reluctant to even tell you are you ready breaking news isis releases new statement on las vegas shooting isis triples down on the las vegas massacre on thursday they claimed that stephen paddock converted to islam six months ago wait it gets even better it gets even better. Are you ready for this? They tripled down. His name that they gave him, Abu Abdul Bar al Amriki. They say he converted six months ago. Uh, if you watch the TV show Homeland, where a U.S. congressman had been converted while he was in the military, why is this implausible? Unless you're Jimmy Kimmel and you've eaten too many knishes your whole life and your brain is now nothing but dough between your ears and all you know how to do is make believe you're crying. What do you mean it's not plausible? Because you want to believe he's not converted to Islam because it doesn't fit the agenda of NBC? So who do you believe now? Do you believe the ISIS group about the Las Vegas attack? Uh, indicated the shooter, Abu Abdul Bar al-Amriki, meaning this guy converted six months ago. You don't want to know that. This is going to throw the liberal media into a nervous breakdown. They're going to have to go out and get Valium and SSRIs in one combination to go along with the crack that they normally use. Breaking news, ISIS releases new statement on Las Vegas shooting ISIS triples down. Now, if this is true, and I have no way to verify it one way or the other, you know, they're opportunistic. These terrorists are opportunistic. They like to take credit for any kind of terror attack. You know, that's what their religion teaches them, not to build things, not to create things, not to save lives, but to destroy things and take lives. That's the religion of peace. From their point of view, not all Muslims, of course, homily, not all Muslims, of course, believe that, but the extremists who have hijacked the religion take their religion all too literally, and they believe it's their job to blow things up, break things down, stab women in the street, run people over, uh, and uh, shoot people. That's what they believe their religion teaches them. See, this is the way they look at it. Ask them, they'll tell you. That's what they actually believe their religion teaches them. Don't blame me if you don't like it. I know it's uncomfortable. If you're on, uh, if you smoke banana peels and eat knishes and make believe you cry on NBC at night, but unfortunately, that's what it says. That's what it actually says. So here we go. I'm not asking you what you believe. ISIS released a new statement on Las Vegas shooting saying that he converted. And they give us his uh, Abu name. I remember I jokingly said when this happened Monday, I hope he's not an Abu job. Here it is. He's an Abu job. So what is that? Let's assume for a minute that ISIS is telling the truth and it will be verified shortly. 
that he was a convert, that in fact up in the room, the sheriff almost gave it away. They found the little Quran job, a little prayer rug they kept out of the picture. I'm taking it to the extreme. The rug was there, not a Confederate flag, but an ISIS flag. Not a Christian Bible, but a Quran. Let's just say that's what they saw, and they were stunned. And the FBI said, put it away, it's evidence, you can't show it. Let's just take it to a movie extreme. What does that tell you? It tells you that ISIS has penetrated much further than we believe, including intelligence agencies, which I have been hearing about for three years now from insiders who have been emailing me, saying that they've penetrated almost every agency in the federal government. You haven't heard that yet? Oh, I'm sorry, the guy who cries at night on television and his cousin Wolf Blitzer didn't tell you that, so it's not true. I've been told from insiders that they penetrated the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the State Department, you name it, and they were planted, deeply implanted by Barack Hussein Obama's buddies in all of these agencies, and they're there and they're operating. But that's not, that's not believable, is it? Because you haven't heard it on a nighttime comedian show where he cries in between so therefore it can't be true and who am i to tell you anything big deal so i have a phd from a great university and two master's degrees big deal so i published 30 books big deal that the last five books were bestsellers including new york times number one big deal that you have a background in health and background in nutrition big deal big deal you don't use drugs like we do in the media you don't know anything. We know everything, don't we? We know how to keep the American people stupefied. We know how to spray them with mental raid. They're like nothing but cockroaches to us who we spray with violence and filth every night. So they're so stupefied they don't know what's really going on. Who are you, Michael Savage? Well, you'll figure it out one day, I'm sure. So were there multiple shooters? Well, if we're to believe the ISIS fanatics who have just tripled down and said that his name was Abu Chaim Yankel or whatever, that he converted a number of years ago, month, six months ago, Abu Abdul Bar al-Amraki, that's his real name. Well, if we're to believe the terror group and that he really was a convert, why that means others were in that suite with him. Why that would explain some of the actual soldiers who called this show, who said that this has the uh, fingerprints of ISIS or Al-Qaeda all over it because they faced the same situations in Iraq and Afghanistan while the late-night slime was laughing all the way to the bank. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Breaking news, ISIS just tripled down and said that the shooter converted to Islam six months ago. So who do we believe, ISIS or Wolf Blitzer? Who do we believe, uh, ISIS or Jake Tapper? Who do we believe, ISIS or stoner comedians on late night television who make believe they're politicians all of a sudden? Who do you believe? Oh, it's old, that, it's old white guy. We don't believe ISIS at all. No, sorry, Bob. We need to get those guns away from the white guys so when ISIS takes over, no one can defend themselves. See? Someone writes this and says, no offense, but how do dudes in caves have Twitter and graphic designers? And then another one writes, same way a Puerto Rican mayor in a supposedly a post-apocalyptic setting of desperation and death has brand spanking new T-shirts printed each day. <laughs> People are real stupid, aren't they, Wolf? They can't look right through you. This is frightening. Same way stinking, nasty, American-hating teenagers with their pants falling down and no jobs gets printed signage, brass knuckles, and organized media to hide who they are. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh, someone writes this. ISIS are not in caves. Many of them are in the United States, in Europe, Syria, and the Philippines. Okay, so we had a neighbor on two days ago who said he doesn't believe this guy could have done it. Then we had a caller to the show yesterday who said, Michael, Michael, Michael. Yes, yes, yes. He said, I just drove from Mesquite, Nevada, where the shooter's house is located. And Michael, I'm shocked there's no police tape around it. You can walk right in. 
And I said, God, that's like an old Steven Seagal movie from the 1980s. Remember that one? Where the police disappear uh, as the terror, as the as the criminals show up from Chicago to execute the cop, the good cop. This is so eerie. It's so frightening. There's almost no way to know which way to turn. Look, I was going to try and do Jerry Lee Lewis music, lighten it up, food, Teddy. I can't do it. I can't do it. This is getting worse by the second. If this is true, that ISIS, which is tripling down just came out and said Stephen Paddock converted to Islam six months ago. I know you haven't heard it on Fox News because old Shep Smith has to do what they wrote for him last night. Uh, I realize that you haven't heard about it yet, so you can't comment, and I realize it wasn't on the show that precedes mine across America, which is all about self-promotion and saying how great he is. I realize he didn't have anything to say about it, so you're not ready to talk about it, but I have to talk about it. In Nava 100, hashtag ISIS featured an infographic on slash tag, hashtag Las Vegas attack and indicated the shooter Abu Abdul Bar al-Amriki converted six months ago. I realize you hadn't heard it yet, but you just heard it now. So what do you make of this? On Monday, ISIS released two statements, and now they've doubled down, now they've tripled down. So who do you believe? Um, CNN or ISIS? Who do you believe? Well, of course you believe CNN. They're very reliable. Or you believe... Uh, um, Phil Griffin, who runs MSNBC, he's absolutely a reliable source for everything. Do you believe our government is infested with many leftovers from Obama who are actually on the side and playing for the other team, on the other side and playing for the team? You betcha. You betcha. So Trump now has to clean house. He's got to get out the raid and clean out most of the intelligence agencies and even run on a, uh, on a skeleton crew if he has to. Or you could say it was the act of a MAGA uh, madness perpetrated by a fascist Trump supporter. And the NRA was really in the room. There was actually the NRA who was in the room with, with breech-loading guns and old shotguns. They don't even know what they're talking about. They say breech-loading shotguns. Was it really the work of a MAGA supporter, a fascist Trump supporter, and the NRA was really behind it? That's what you probably believe if you vote for Nancy Pelosi and live in San Francisco. If you read the San Francisco Chronicle line by line and actually believe what you're reading, Big Brother or Little Sister, you probably believe the NRA did the shooting. That's how sick you are. You're the kind of white guy seen in San Francisco yesterday with a new BMW. This was actually sent to me. A white guy in San Francisco with a new BMW getting out of his car with a bumper sticker that says, Stop White Supremacy. If you're one of those people, you probably believe the NRA is behind the shooting. You're that brainwashed. You actually believe you have a newspaper in the city, that it's not a mimeograph sheet of the Democrat Party. Okay, here we go. 855-407-282 is the phone number. What do you uh, make of this right now? Vegas shooter converted. Size has tripled down. PJ Media now, Bridget Johnson. The Islamic State continued insisting that they have a connection to Sunday Night's Massacre in Las Vegas with the publication of an infographic about the crime filling the second page of their 16-page weekly newsletter. Today's release marks the 100th issue of their magazine, which is distributed in ISIS territories and online via mediums such as Telegram and social media as a PDF. ISIS claimed through their Amrak Amok News Agency Monday morning, the Las Vegas attacker is a soldier of the Islamic State who carried out the attack in response to calls for targeting co coalition countries. They claimed he had converted to Islam recently. In the new issue of their magazine, the terror group claimed Stephen Paddock converted to Islam six months ago. ISIS persisted in his full court press effort to claim responsibility for the attack after the Amok News Agency claimed with their official Nashir channel and affiliated al Batar Media Foundation, all insisting Paddock acted on behalf of the terror group. They go on. The newsletter used the nom de guerre that ISIS bestowed upon Paddock early in the week. Abu Abdul Bar al-Mriki, the American. The brother Abdul uh, Bar stationed himself for the invasion on the 32nd floor of a hotel overlooking a May Allah accept him, overlooking a concert, and opened fire continuously on the crowds using 23 guns and more than 2,000 rounds and died. May Allah accept him after exhausting his ammunition, al-Naba states. Leaked crime scene photos and officials have indicated there was much more ammo in the room. Paddock was interrupted by a security guard, shot more than 200 rounds through the hotel room door, and then killed himself as police attempted to enter the suite. The uh, ISIS infographic states, quote, <clears throat> results of the operation, 59 killed and 527 wounded. A number also reduced Wednesday as officials got a more accurate count from local hospitals. 
The issue of their magazine released two days ago before the June London Bridge attack, two days bef- before the London Bridge attack, warned that another terrorist attack in Britain was definitely coming. On Wednesday evening in Vegas, FBI Special Agent in Charge Aaron Roos told reporters, quote, we have found no evidence to this point to indicate terrorism, but this is an ongoing investigation. We're going to look at all avenues, not close any. I guess they're checking out Janet Reno. They'll go find where she is. Maybe she can help the investigation. Maybe Janet Reno can help you or figure out who did it. Or Janet Napolitano, she's not busy enough destroying the University of California. Well, this is not a laughing matter. New ISIS uh, on Vegas shooting claims Paddock converted six months ago. So if you're a fan of um, the show Homeland, where a returning Iraq war veteran who converted secretly in Iraq to Islam becomes a congressman and secretly continues to pray to Allah and uh, plans a major terrorist attack, why is this not credible? Let's say plausible. Let's say plausible. Credible, I don't know. Plausible, yes. Plausible, yes. Credible, I don't know. Chris on WABC, your opinion counts. You're on the Savage Nation. Fire away. Hey, Mike, a long time listener, first time caller. Thank you very much. Um, right, let's start with this. I'm not a regular talk show. That's stuff that you reserve for others. Long time listener, Grant. I, I have your cufflinks. I have your cufflinks. I bought the toupee with your name on it. I got your secret shoes. I bought the secret handshake. What's on your mind, Chris? Well, be- before you mentioned the whole ISIS thing, I'm saying, what if, what if this guy actually wasn't, you know, wasn't ISIS related and just was like some kind of sociopath? Right, well, what are you on the radio for? What do you mean before the ISIS? I just mentioned that they released something new. Doesn't that change your opinion? It absolutely does. And it is. All right, thanks for calling. You shouldn't have been put up on my show. You just wanted to hear yourself talk, so when you go out tonight in a bar in Brooklyn, you could say you're on the Michael Savage show. Hey, Eddie, did you hear me on the show today? I got on again. I slipped past the, the, the call screener, Eddie. I got on that show again. I had nothing to say. I didn't know what I was talking about. How did I sound, Eddie? No one have anything to say? Yeah. Uh, KSFO and line three, go ahead. Is this a plausible claim by ISIS that he converted to Islam six months ago, in your opinion, Ann? Absolutely. Um, Michael, there were many reports six months ago that said that ISIS was setting up terror camps and training camps over the border in Mexico. We already know that the Obama administration was doing gun running missions with Mexico. And the videos that are being posted, credible videos where you can clearly see the shooter's face, Paddock's face, protesting America with his little, you know, I don't want to use the inappropriate body part for a woman, hat. Clearly, How do you know? I'm, I've seen those pictures. How do you know it's him with the pink hat? How do I know it's him? Because there's a picture of him with the girlfriend. They look exactly like the pictures of their driver's licenses. Oh, oh the innocent Filipino girlfriend? Yes. Who, su- who suddenly appeared in a wheelchair. Her lawyer put her in a wheelchair when she got off the plane. Suddenly she was uh, she was handicapped all of a sudden. Well, of course she is, because guess who was interviewing her? Andrew McCabe, our good old friend from the FBI. Obama's... What? Boy. Wait, say that again. What did you just say, please? Uh, who was wheeling her? Andrew McCabe was wheeling her? <laughs> no, he was head of the interview uh, for the FBI. The, the sheriff even said that. I'm very observant. And no one else caught it, but Andrew McCabe has taken over this whole case for the FBI. Tell the audience who Andrew McCabe is. You want me to tell you who Andrew McCabe is? I want you to tell the world who Andrew McCabe is. Andrew McCabe is the Obama leftist DNCer who is so crooked. Trump actually said he was going to fire him from the FBI once he got rid of Comey. I can't believe this guy is still running our FBI. Actually, what did I say yesterday on this show? Did I say that after the shooting in San Bernardino, I said, how long did it take Obama's FBI to even connect it to Islam? Remember, they were forced to admit uh, after three days there was a connection uh, to the two shooters that they were Muslims. They hid it as long as they could. And I said, why are we hearing nothing from the FBI? Where is the press conference from the FBI? To this day, there is none. I agree with you 100%. That guy, the FBI guy that was on the TV yesterday was, you know, plain Jane Vanilla. And if you listen, they specifically said Andrew McCabe was taking over the interviewing of the Filipino girlfriend in Los Angeles. 
and he had taken over the whole, basically the whole case. So he's filtering through. So what does that tell you? You sound very, very um, strident, number one, almost on the verge of hysteria, and I'm not trying to be sexist about it. Oh. What, what's, I, I, Anne, what's bothering you? Anne, stop. I trust women's intuition. What's bothering you about this picture? What's really bothering me is I think that the left has gotten people so radicalized, quite frankly. I think Hillary's rhetoric, I think the rhetoric from the left has triggered that shooting of Scalise. And I think it triggered this gentleman and his girlfriend. The girlfriend was always a radical leftist. There's, there's a lot of evidence that her ex-husband was extremely radicalized. To hate Wait, are you talking about the shooter's girlfriend, whatever her name is, you, th you say she was a leftist? How do we know that? Well, there's lots of pictures of her at anti-Trump rallies all over the Internet. It left Google. All right. Well, this is, this is now, look, this is an Ag Agatha Christie mystery story, and the government is supposed to allay our suspicions and fears. Instead, they're doing nothing. They're sitting there dead-footed once again and letting the people run wild with theories. All I can say is we do not know whether this claim that he was converted to Islam six months ago is credible, but we do know what. It is what, Ann? Plausible. Is that correct? It's absolutely plausible. Thank you for listening to the show. The most reliable and insightful radio show in the history of the world is this one. I'll be right back to continue with my analysis and opinion of the latest shocking news on the Las Vegas shooting. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Did you know that you can find that if your body is making enough nitric oxide simply by testing your own saliva? I've been raving about Super Beets, my circulation superfood, because it happens to work. It's a great drink. You get more energy, more stamina in as little as 20 minutes. My friends at Super Beets include their new saliva indicator strips with every purchase. You use your own saliva to see changes in your nitric oxide level from using Super Beets. I love that Super Beets puts their money where their mouth is, and for a limited time with your first order, Super Beets will send you an entire month's supply of saliva indicator strips, which is a $25 value for free. With your order, you also get a free book, plus your first can of Super Beets free. That's another $60 value for free. So try it for yourself. Call 1-800-481-0504. Get a month's supply of indicator strips. Absolutely free to track those changes at a cellular level. More energy, more stamina while supporting healthy circulation. All you got to do is call 1-800-481-0504, 800-481-0504, or simply go to savagelovesbeats.com, 1-800-481-0504, or go to savagelovesbeats.com. We're talking about the breaking news, which is that ISIS has now tripled down and said that the shooter has converted to is had converted to Islam. They even gave his name Abu whatever. Everyone's an Abu over there. And now on the, on the I, I can't believe it. And here's something ironic. The, the top of the Drudge Report, listen to this headline. Weinstein accused of sex harassment, lashes out at the NRA and Trump. Lawyer says she will sue the New York Times. Do you know how ironic this is? Because Weinstein is one of the biggest gun grabbers in the world. Weinstein, in fact, last year, if I remember correctly, said he was going to do an anti-gun movie along with Hillary Clinton. Uh, he and her are like peas in a pod. You don't know that. This is quite ironic on a day like today. Now, what's even more ironic here is that one of his lawyers, this guy Weinstein, accused of harassment in this complaint by the New York Times, one of his lawyers is none other than the lawyer named Lisa Bloom. You know who she is, don't you? Lisa Bloom is that legal eagle who represents women who have been sexually harassed. Well, I guess the money was better on the other side of the aisle because now she's representing a man accused of harassing women. What could be better than being a lawyer, believing in nothing and collecting from both sides? That's the way the law is practiced in America. Isn't it wonderful? The lawyer says they will sue the New York Times. Harvey Weinstein will sue the New York Times, says is a tiny. Oh, it's Charles Harder, says that proceeds from the case will be donated to women's organizations. <laughs> Cynicism, sorry. The mogul's attorney, Charles Harder, says he's preparing a lawsuit against the paper. I have to read it to be fair. 
The New York Times published today a story that is saturated with the false and defamatory statements about Harvey Weinstein. He writes in an email to The Hollywood Reporter. It relies on mostly hearsay accounts. Well, I don't know what really happened. I don't know if Harvey Weinstein, you know, took out a bathrobe and said, have a bath or whatever. I don't know. If he gave nude massages to starlets who wanted to become stars. That never happened in Hollywood before. Why should we believe that starlets are subjected to such things? You all know that they're Vestal Virgins. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Too much of love drives a man insane. The song goes out to Harvey Weinstein. But what a thrill. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. I let you love what I thought it was funny. You came along and woo. Now, Harvey, Come on, Harvey. Ball I'll the bouncing the ball. This world is fine. Good great great balls of fire. Kiss the baby. So Harvey Weinstein, who has been accused of um, a long era of uh, sexual harassment by various uh, women, has decided to step down from his company, and he's turned his hatred on the NRA and Trump. That's right. Hey, that, how does that work? I don't quite understand that one, but uh, I don't get it. Weinstein just apologized for a bombshell. New York Times report that he engaged in sexual harassment. Blah, 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 reached settlements with eight women. He said he would take a leave from work and devote himself now to battling the NRA and Trump. That makes sense, doesn't it? I I don't quite understand that connection. Of course, the biggest story that broke in the last hour is the one we've been talking about. ISIS has tripled down and saying that the shooter, the monster, had converted to Islam uh, six months ago. Paddock converted six months ago. And uh, they claim he has a name. The Las Vegas attacker is a soldier of the Islamic State who carried out the attack in response to calls for targeting coalition countries. In a new issue of their magazine, they say that Stephen Paddock converted to Islam six months ago. They even give him a name, Abu something or other, Abu Chaim Yankel, Amriki, whatever. It says the brother Abu Chaim Yankel stationed himself for the invasion on the 32nd floor of a hotel overlooking a... Co- I don't want to read the whole thing. So we've been talking about this for a couple of days now, that the shooting scene doesn't match the actual event. People who were shot said they heard several guns. I had a woman on yesterday, and I will play that again at 34. She was shot at, so she knows more than uh, the late-night comedian who has the brains of a knish uh, as to what actually happened. She said she heard two different gunfires. She claims someone was shooting at her in the crowd while she was on the ground. But what does she know? She doesn't work for Phil Griffin. How could she know anything? She, like, she can't know anything. Even though she was actually shot at, why would she know more than Phil Griffin or even Merv Griffin's corpse? So that's what we're talking about in the Savage Nation, as well as, I suppose, any other topic that is plaguing us because it's all interconnected in a crazy way today. If you're doing a pastiche of what's going on, this is a crazy time to be alive and in the news business. ISIS releases new statement on Las Vegas shooting. ISIS triples down, top of michaelsavage.com. Audio, Vegas survivor tells Savage she heard multiple shooters. I got more traffic on that than any other thing I've ever had on this show. NRA finally breaks silence, says bump fire devices should be regulated more tightly. Are they, is that related? Bump fire device. Is that related to Harvey Weinstein's story? or the What's a bump fire? Bump fire? Is that related to sexual harassment? No. Oh, that's the gun story. MSNBC cuts off more victory speech because he's talking about God. Oh, come on. That's crazy. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm really, I mean, this is like I didn't plan on this. You know that I have a big book coming out, which I said I was going to dedicate to God after all the other successes he has given me. So I've been writing the book for a short period of time, like since I'm about five years old. And I wrote God, Faith, and Reason. And my punchline is the search to find God is defining itself. And I try to show that faith and reason are not really opposite each other. They're cousins in God, Faith, and Reason. Do you think 
that this forthcoming book, God, Faith, and Reason, has more validity in light of the craziness of the world we're living in right now, or it has no no validity whatsoever because they won't interview me interview me on MSNBC or any other uh, other other alphabet channels because they're all haters of God, flag, and guns. I don't know the answer to that. All I know is I owed it as an obligation to uh, to the Creator. Because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. I still don't know how I get through every day. Uh, last night I lit a memorial candle to my father. He passed away in 1970. Can you believe how long ago that was? And in my tradition, we're supposed to light a candle in memory of the parents and loved ones each year that the day of their passing. So we have like a candle that burns for 24 hours that you light. I lit it last night. I was very moved by it. And as I was going to sleep, I went back into the kitchen where I'd left it on a ceramic stand so it didn't burn the house down. And it was flickering in front of his picture. And I feel I felt his presence. I swear it to God. So what does that make me? Crazy? Sentimental? Loyal? Faithful? What does it make me? What does it make anyone who has faith and belief? Don't say I'm unreasonable. I have more higher degrees than anyone you probably know. So I'm both reasonable and faithful. What can I do about it? Does that mean I'm schizophrenic? Or does that mean I'm a normal human being who can both have faith in God and be extremely reasonable? Huh? See, don't you understand that you can be both? Man is not one thing. Man is many things. We're multidimensional individuals. That's why I wrote God, Faith, and Reason. Well, it's only the 5th of October, and the book is not out until November 14th. I would have had it come out earlier, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. I wanted it out before Halloween. It's coming out instead before Thanksgiving. All right, that's the way the cookie crumbles. And it'll be in every bookstore in the country, and you could order it online at Amazon or whatever, or whatever. I don't know the company, Amazon.com. It doesn't matter whether the book sells 10 million copies or 100,000. Does it matter to me? No, I did it as a worship of thanks to God. It's that simple. The search to find God is the fun. Will I be rewarded for in the next world? Is there a next world? Will all be revealed to me at the moment of passing? Is there like a gate that you go through? Does someone wait and tell you, okay, here's the thing. You were going to come in, you were doing good, and then you did this and that's it. You go on the other place. I don't know how that works. Is my mother waiting for me there, cooking for God, as I've joked about? She really up there smiling. Hey, how you doing, Michael? We've been waiting for you. It's eerie when I say this because I, I, you know, we're human beings. Do you think we know the answers to these things? Anyone who claims they know the answer is a bigger nut than the shooter. That's all I can tell you. Anyone who claims they know the answer is a bigger nut than the shooter in Las Vegas. I will tell you point blank, I don't know the answer. That's why I wrote God, Faith, and Reason. It's my way of worshiping God, and thanking him for creating me and giving me all these blessings that I have on this show every day. I mean, by, I, I'm not supposed to go on and on about this. I should be talking about the shooting and Harvey Weinstein right now. But I have to ask you, do you actually think you'd breathe your next breath were it not for a higher power? You think that that beautiful child that you have would be here were it not for a higher power? Maybe, I don't know. Say, ah, yeah, we just breathe like mink. What are you talking about? It's all mechanical. Just ask everyone in San Francisco. They know. Ask all of the people without children who know so much about raising children. Ask them. They write for the New York Times. They don't have a child amongst them, but they know exactly how to raise children. They write books on it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So who do you believe, ISIS or Wolf Blitzer? So again, I've invited callers from Las Vegas on KBET, my superb affiliate, where this show runs three hours live, to call the show if they know something and want to say something. And here we have a few. Get ready. I'm just warming you up because here we come. John on KBET in Las Vegas, go ahead. What do you know? What do you say? Well, first of all, I'm not a police officer, but I do work at a place that's a very popular restaurant. We uh, have several police officers that come in. I know them by their first names. They know me. Uh, we've been talking about this. And they can only, you know, tell me so much, but they've also told me they're waiting to find out information. Now, they said our new police chief, Lombardo, is a very transparent guy. He would tell us everything, but the problem is within, one told me within 10 hours, the FBI and Department of Homeland Security came in and said, we're taking it over. You guys basically... So it's right out of an old Steven Seagal movie. Local cops who tend to be more honest, more forthcoming, are swept aside. The feds come in, show their badges, and push the local cops away, and they're taking over. So why are they taking it over? What's the reason? I, I don't know. We were talking about it. I said... This is a local, as horrible as it is, it's a local crime. We have a big police department. We're not some little 
uh, rinky-dink police department out here. We have a giant police department. Why are the feds taking it over? I mean, I don't mind. There's only only one answer to that, but you have to be a movie watcher to know the answer to that one. You know know that the feds are going to give us a more honest appraisal of what actually happened, right, John? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what John, John, what restaurant are you in? And they name the restaurants, and the next time I'm there, I'll go look for you. What's the name of the place? Well, I, you know, uh, Mr. Savage, I would love to. I just don't want to get the police officers. In any, any, oh, 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 oh. You know, it's, not, it's not that Italian restaurant, is it, that was in a lot of movies? Mm, you're getting close. but <laughs> I used to have an apartment in Vegas. I moved out when I saw people in the elevator that looked like they were in The Sopranos. I decided it was time to leave. I sold the apartment. Well, you might have been safe there. (laughs) (laughs) No, I was in the elevator once. I swear to God, God, there was a guy in the elevator who looked like not his wife. Let's put it to you that way. Heavy set, short, uh, rotund, powerful uh, eminence in the elevator. And I said, okay, the neighborhood's changing. I don't know whether to stay or go. Well, they would have kept your neighborhood safe, though. (laughs) Yeah, that's for for sure. And the restaurants are darn good in that area, I got to tell you. It's always a scene in Vegas when you go to a real restaurant, uh, you know, outside the hotels where the locals eat. Yeah. So you're saying you're saying that the cops who come in say they've they've been pushed aside, they have no power. The feds have taken it over, right, John? Yeah, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but that's the way it came across. And uh, like like I said, I don't want to get any of them in trouble. I don't. That's why I'm not going to name the restaurant. All right, John. I want I want to do something self serving. Is this show very well listened to in Las Vegas? I think it is. I hear from cabbies, cops, waiters. I think this show's super popular. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. And then not only that, they had um, a small convention out here. It was kind of uh, for people who um, listen to you, uh, a couple other talk show hosts, that did, people that you're friends with, uh, like, you know, Laura Ingram and Alex Jones. And uh, I couldn't go to it because I was working, but I was talking to some guys. I met them there because I overheard their conversation. And I said to him, I said, are you guys uh, Michael Savage fans? And they all looked at me and said, yeah, yeah. Then they told me about the convention, why they were in town. So, well, I'm going to send you a free copy of Trump's War. The, the book is actually more important now than when I wrote it for one reason. I think Trump has, let us say, gone a little astray, moved so far to the center, he may have forgotten who elected him and what we really want. And it's not so much a criticism of the president as it is of the agenda not being followed. And I may have some very big news for all listeners in the coming weeks or months about my role in trying to steer the agenda back to where it should be. Let's put it to you that way. Stay on the line. Now, here's another caller coming out of Las Vegas that I want to play for you. And I will do so the minute I return right here on the home of God, faith, and reason. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Lighten the load. NBC is now regretting, according to this article, NBC's $69 million mistake. Network executives slam the floundering Megan Kelly as they reveal she is making $23 million a year in a three-year deal for her morning show. Rivery, ri- uh, whatever. I mean, they're so overpaid, these phonies. It's unbelievable. Matt Lauer makes $23, 25000000 million. He's a very reliable source, as you know. And Jimmy Knish... Schimmel, Jimmy Schimmel Knish, makes around $15 million a year, another genius. But uh, speaking of her, I mean, her show dipped in ratings. She's been excoriated for not connecting with her audience and awkward guest encounters. And the latest ratings report reveal that Megyn Kelly's show on Wednesday had a low viewership, a 1.5 overall rating, and a 0.8 rating among women 25 to 54. Well, I don't know why. I mean, she was good in the beginning, but she's so over, uh, let us say, played. She's a brilliant girl, very smart, very good-looking. But what's, uh, what's so unique about that? There's a lot of good-looking women. The really smart women in the news are not in the news, except for Laura Ingram. The smartest woman in the American media is Laura Ingram. I really, I, you know that she's a friend of mine. So she has a great show, and it's going to become a bigger show when she goes on to uh, uh, Fox at an earlier hour. The smartest women in the news business are on the RT. They speak five languages. They analyze things in great detail. 
And whether I agree with them or not is irrelevant. They can analyze things and ask questions that are poignant. This is absurd what they do here in this country, what passes for the news. But nevertheless, that's a separate issue. The issue is the shooting in Las Vegas. The other big issue is the shooting in Las Vegas. And, of course, the third biggest issue is the shooting in Las Vegas uh, that ISIS tripled down and said that he converted to Islam six months ago. And he gave him the name Abu Shmeel. KBET Las Vegas. Chris, go ahead, please. What do you say? What do you know? Mr. Savage, I am a security guard here in Las Vegas. I've lived here for 12 years. Between Thursday and Friday, I saw Capitol Police in this town three different times. I've never once seen them before. And I, I was working that night, and I have a perspective of the 95 northbound. Both sides of traffic were completely blocked off by police. The only way anybody would have been able to exit via that route would have been in a vehicle like the Capitol Police are being escorted differently. So what are you implying? I'm implying that there's a conspiracy that's much larger than just this guy shooting and being involved with ISIS. If he was, in fact, ISIS, he was also assisted by our alphabet agencies in one way or another in this city. Is that where your conspiracy theory is leading you? I mean, that's where everything seems to be pointing me right now, is that there was involvement. Well, the Capitol Police are well known for, for, for the very good job they're doing. Do you remember during Obama's reign... A young African-American woman in a car made a wrong turn. She had a baby in a car. Remember the Capitol Police executed her? That's right. Do you remember the Capitol Police executed her in a car, African-American young woman? And do you remember what the late-night hosts who are on medication said about it? Nothing. Do you remember what the geniuses in the news business said about the execution of an African-American woman uh, during Obama's reign? Nothing. So people don't trust the media, rightly so, because they know they're all full of you-know-what. They're more toxic than the pesticides and honey. So I don't know how far to go with this, but ISIS saying that he converted six months ago is certainly going to add fuel to that fire, will it not? It has to. It has to. And you have to take them credibly. So far, they've been proven right on everybody they've claimed as their shooters. So yes, but do you know it's not yet appeared on foxnews.com? I can't find it anywhere but on the Drudge Report. Drudge Report's the only place I've seen it. It says ISIS says he converted six months ago. I see it nowhere else. And the poor, I mean, the poor saps who are on television news right now have not even moved with the news that's breaking. They're so out of time, they're up to last night's news. Okay, my friend, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Weinstein accused of sex harassment. Headline on Drudge lashes out at NRA and Trump. I don't understand that connection. Lawyer says they will sue the New York Times. And there's a great picture, by the way, of Harvey, Harvey Weinstein a great gun grabber, hates the Second Amendment, says he was going to do a film against guns. I remember that distinctly about a year ago. And what's even more ironic about Weinstein, here's a guy who made his fortune by producing one movie after another, which graphically, movies which graphically display handguns, long guns, knives, axes, weird sex, sex, guns, rock and roll. Here's a guy who made his fortune and his name in Hollywood, doing what they do best, which is promoting filth and violence, who was going to do a movie against guns. I mean, this, this was wonderful. And who is his greatest friend in this picture? There's Hillary Clinton putting her hands on him. That's two peas in a pod, is it not? Well, we're running short of time. When I come back, we play the tape of the woman who was shot at who said there were two shooters right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. We have a caller right now, Gail, calling from Las Vegas on KBET. She was in the crowd. She was shot at. She has something to say that you're not going to hear from Jonas Schimmel on NBC. Gail, line seven, go ahead. You have the floor. Oh, hi there. Um, first off, I've never been in the military, and I'm not a pro by any means on guns or anything like that. But when we were running, because we were out in the open and everything, we were running near the um, vendor tents. And we were just, you know, easy shots. There was a Metro police officer out there that saw us running, and he ran and he grabbed me and pulled my husband and him into the vendor tent. They're like little plastic tents. And we went down, and we could hear all the shooting. And we would hear them load and then stop shooting, or, you know, shoot and then stop shooting and load. And while we were laying there, this officer was covering me, um, because of all the shots. And the thing that 
we've noticed, and my husband noticed too, and I think even the Metro Police officer, there were shots that were higher pitched. There were shots that were lower sounding. And they were going at the same time, and the lower shots were getting closer to us. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, there's somebody walking in the crowd spraying their gun back and forth and shooting people, and he was getting closer. The shots would stop. The officer got up and walked out, and I heard his his radio because I was right there, and we heard we have active shooters. And then my officer who had been protecting me said, where is he? Where is he? Do you see him? Is he behind us? Do you have a visual? And then the shot. So you're saying there was a shooter in the crowd going around shooting people in the crowd? We don't know, and that's what my husband and I are trying to figure out. But you said you heard two different types of gunfire. We have a caller on the line who has been gracious enough to stay over. She's Gail. She's calling from Las Vegas on my affiliate KBET. She was actually shot at. She's not a late-night crybaby comedian making believe he knows what the hell he's talking about. She was shot at. She said she heard two different types of sounds meaning two different types of guns. But worse than that, in terms of this investigation that's being covered up, she said she believes there was a man going through the crowd, shooting at people in the crowd. Gail, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Welcome back. Thanks for staying on the line. Please tell your story all over again to a brand new audience on the Savage Nation. Okay. Well, we were when we were first there, we heard the popping of the sounds, and we thought it was a firecracker, you know. And it was only like, you know, three or four pop, pop, pops. And then it got quiet. And then a couple more pop, 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 pops. And then it just started spraying. You know, it's just like just nonstop bullets shooting. So everybody started running. And we just ducked. You know, my husband and I, we just went on the ground and froze. And I remember, you know, there's a girl that was standing right next to me that was shot in the stomach. And she had a huge bullet wound in her stomach it was huge it wasn't a little tiny thing and she was bleeding profusely um i was horrible and, and then people were just freaking it out and so everybody ran and we were just still staying there and my husband said gail we gotta go we gotta go we gotta run we're gonna get shot so we got up and we started running toward the um vendor tents they're the white plastic tents and there was mm -hmm. Metro police officer that was out there, and he saw us running, and he, he said, come here, come here, get here, and he grabbed me, and he pulled us inside the tent, and we went down, and we, the shots kept going and going, and then they would stop, and then we were like, okay, okay, it's okay, we're, it's all over, and then they would start all over again, and it seemed to me, and I'm not a pro on guns and bullets, anything, but there was like higher sounding bullets, and then a really lower, deeper bullet. And as we were laying there, it, it sounded like the shots were getting closer to us. And I'm going, oh, my God, oh, my God, we're going to get shot. They're going to see us in this tent. Because it seemed like somebody, I had not seen this by any means, but to me it sounded like somebody was actually walking from the crowd from west to east through the crowd and shooting because everybody was going in one direction because there was no way out. And then they would stop, and then it would be, like, higher pitches and then no sound. So And then the sound would start again, but they were on top of each other, it sounded. And I was freaking out, you know, obviously. Well, hold on. You just said they would be on top of each other, meaning the higher-sounding bullet yeah. and then the lower-sounding, or let's say the sound of one gun higher than lower, and they were coming at you at, at the same time? They Yes, they sounded at the same time, and the one that was lower kept getting closer sounding to us. And I'm thinking your brain goes through all these images and thoughts, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, it sounds like there's somebody on the ground that is shooting. And what was so bizarre about this is that Mandalay Bay was on our right. This, this creep was on the, whatever, 32nd floor, and... The girl that was standing right beside me, maybe seven, eight inches behind me, got shot straight in her stomach, right above her belly button. Now, how does a bullet 
come straight down and make a left turn and hit her in the stomach. And I don't understand it. it was wait, wait, hold on. I don't understand. So the, the hotel is on the right, but she got shot from the left? She got shot straight in the center. We were facing due south. Oh, so you were facing you were facing away from the hotel, Gail. I want to be clear. You were facing away from the hotel. Our right shoulder would be facing Mandalay Bay. The okay, on the right shoulder, there's the hotel. Now your stomach is facing diagonal to that hotel, and you're saying the girl next to you is facing in the same direction as you and your husband. Yes, we were both facing west. Direct. Okay, so you're asking how could she get struck directly? in her stomach from that direction when there was allegedly no shooter there. Well, see, that's what's so bizarre, because I even thought that. Because how could a bullet be coming from our right, which was on our west, we're facing direct south, a bullet would have to come straight up and make a 90-degree a left turn and go into her stomach. That's Gail, has anyone, has anyone from L LA, uh, Las Vegas Metro interviewed you? Um, yeah, not from... No, not from there, but I've had other interviews with, like, CBS, and I was mentioned at the White House by Sarah Huckabee, you know. Um, but did, did you tell the story that you just told about two different sounds of two different sounding guns? They seem south, yes. No, no. Did no. you tell that? Did you tell what you just told my audience to the other folks who have interviewed you? Did, did you say that exact thing? No, because no one asked me that. <laughs> oh, oh! No one asked you that. The knishes in the media didn't ask you that. No. A hot a hot dog has more an, an, a more analytical ability than most people in the media. Gail, listen to me. What you have just said on this program will make the news. Oh. And I'm not going to divulge your name. I don't want you to be exposed to this. Frankly, if I were you, Gail, I would not give any more interviews. Listen to me very carefully, Gail. Yes, sir. Please do not give any more interviews. Do not divulge your name. Disappear into the night, Gail. Well, they're finding me. I don't know how, but I haven't given any interviews except to the um, CBS, and they're very gracious, you know. I'm well, they're very gracious. Oh. Be careful with them. They're not very gracious. Uh, they're very dangerous. Oh. Uh, Gail, I'm going to let you go because I don't want you to be on this phone any longer. I just want to thank you for surviving and for being an eyewitness to an American tragedy. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Gentlemen, listen to me. If you travel for business, you know it's a game of wins and losses, right? Popping open an overhead bin, finding it empty, that's a win. Sleeping through a wake-up call, that's a loss. Buying your business trip at Upside.com, that's not just a win, it's a triple win. Number one is Upside.com has the absolute best available prices for flights, hotel, and rental cars. With number two, the number two win is that Upside will reward you with a gift card to places like Amazon.com every time you buy a business trip. So, Number three is the amazing six-star treatment you'll get from Upside's customer service specialists, who they call navigators. One recent Upside customer was called away for an emergency meeting and had to miss his wife's birthday. So a navigator sent her flowers to try and help ease the disappointment. That's pretty nice, right? Well, that's just one example of how Upside navigators go above and beyond for business travelers. Imagine what they'll do for you. Upside navigators are instantly accessible 24-7 by voice, chat, email, or message on the Upside app, even reaching out to you with useful info to help you avoid a problem before it happens. So I'm going to start your Upside six-star treatment right now. Just go to Upside.com, use my code SAVAGE, and you're going to get a minimum $100 gift card to Amazon.com. You heard me. Just by using code SAVAGE for a minimum $100 gift card to Amazon.com, simply when you buy your next business trip at Upside.com. That's a great deal. Upside.com, you deserve a better business trip. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. Tony on WABC in New York, what do you see? What do you know? Okay, Doc. I'll make it I'll get right to the point, sir. When you hear the amount of rounds fired, 
there's a long succession of shots being fired with, uh, uninterrupted. And then they show uh, several of the guns confiscated and some photos of the hotel room. You see what, what commonly referred to as banana clips, long magazines that have a curve to them. Those right. can only hold between 30 to 40 rounds, depending on the manufacturer. If you Correct. listen to some of the phone video, uh, the, the amount of shots that are uninterrupted exceed 80. Only one type of magazine can have 100 rounds or more. It would be drum magazines, which would be very big. And they'd be yes. talking about that. Right. When I heard the shooting, I thought it was a military-grade machine gun. It sounded like a military-grade machine gun. There were no such drum magazines shown in the photo. It doesn't mean that they're not outside the, the scan of the shot, uh, by the way. Right. But they would be discussing that even worse, you know, for assault weapons ban even worse than the bump fire weapons. Why is the FBI not giving a press conference when America is having a nervous breakdown over so many unanswered questions? This is very puzzling to me. Even if they're involved in wanting to calm nerves, why are they not calming nerves? If it was Could it be that the federal government wants a national nervous breakdown so that guns can be seized more readily? I, I would agree with you. Uh, I'm a firearm. I mean, the only answer to the question is they want us to be nervous so that more of us who are on the side of guns say, ah, oh, you know, it's time to give them up. Yeah, you cannot legislate a safe society. You know, I got an email from a, a police officer yesterday who said, once the public comes to understand that police can only offer temporary security, or like, excuse me, a partial blanket of security, they'll come to understand the world they actually live in. Yes. So I don't want to get into the gun control argument now. I hear it all day long, and I'm not going to engage in it. It's impossible to discuss that with any rationality. To me, the Second Amendment is very clear. The right to bear arms, the right to protect yourself is firm. And I heard the arguments when Sotomayor was being confirmed for the Supreme Court. They asked her about Heller. And, and she said, Heller, you know, that's the, the, the finding on, on the Second Amendment. She said, Heller is established law. I heard that. Sotomayor said, Hella is established law. I doubt very much that if it ever got to the Supreme Court that she'd reverse herself. Because I agree with Sotomayor. I think that Hella is established law, if you get the drift, Tony. Yes, yes. Tony, but you're from New York. You've heard people like Sotomayor. So you know what I'm saying when I say Hella is, is established law. You, you understand the English, don't you? Yeah, yes, I do. But re if someone's got it in their mind to do something so horrific, no law is going to apply at all. Because they're determined to do what... That's right. If they seized 99% of the weapons in America, there would still be 1% of the 93 million weapons that are out there available, and those who want to do harm will do it anyway. And then, on top of it all, no one can defend themselves against those who would do harm. That's the pure logic of it. But, of course, if you're a late-night host who fakes crying and you have the brains of a knish on steroids, you don't understand that, especially when you have armed bodyguards surrounding you. Exactly. That's all. That's all. Let's move on. What do you know? What do you say? What do you know? What do you say? So are we through with this topic or not? KBOI. Different station, different place. Jason, different caller. Make your point, please. Go ahead on the Savage Nation. Thank you, Michael. Uh, yeah, really quickly, to address the lack of a 100-round drum magazine, those in the picture were actually a surefire magazine that are capable of holding 100 rounds. Secondly... The uh, the double shooter theory that people are going off because they can hear it in the videos. Well, the explanation to that is when a gun is shot at you, you're going to hear the supersonic sound of the bullet, the high-pitched crack. By the time you hear that crack, the bullet's already passed you. It's traveling faster than the speed of sound. The second sound you hear is the low-frequency tone, which is the muzzle break of the bullet exiting the barrel of that rifle. So you'll hear a that, 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 boop, 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 right behind it. If the sustained rate of fire is long enough at a distance, those sounds will begin to overlap each other. And then you only throw in the fact that... Well, you sound like, you sound like a ballistics and acoustic expert. Is that your field uh, or your former military, Jason? I'm, I'm former military, yep. All right, I accept what you just said as valid. So now let me ask you this. ISIS tripled down just hours ago and said that he had converted to Islam... Uh, six months ago, and he has a name, Abu, whatever. What do you think about that statement? Uh, I, it, it's hard to take ISIS at their word. I mean, the, the motive is clear that they would love to be able to take 
credit for something that they did or didn't do. Uh, but it's not beyond the realm of possibility. I mean, it's, it, you know, Islamic extremism. Do you, think, not, do, you think, do you think that an average guy, white or whatever the race is, it doesn't matter to me, would on his own plot such a thing over such a long period of time and carry it off? I don't think that makes any sense. Well, if he, if he did spend four or more days preparing for this event and then, you know, several months prior acquiring weapons over time, I mean, who knows? That really, we, can't, we can only have pure... Wait a minute. Why would he want to do that? Explain what the motive is. That, that's, that's the problem. It's pure conjecture until we get to know... There's no motive. What, he slipped and fell and lost this law lawsuit? So now he's going to kill innocent people? Doesn't hold up. Doesn't hold water for me. There's no psychological explanation for a single man to do a thing like this. I've never seen it. I've never heard of it. I never read about it. No, you're the doctor. <laughs> no, I'm not the doctor of psychology. I'm a man with common sense. I do not see a motive in an average man to do a thing like this, even a crazy man. I believe that there is an ISIS connection because it would make sense to me that he was brainwashed by these religious fanatics and they helped him. And someone helped the other shooters who helped him escape. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. and die and talk radio welcome to the savage nation well to me this story just got bigger not smaller just when the mainstream media wanted to sweep it under the rug and have you focus on the normal sex drugs and rock and roll that they're famous for uh, isis comes out and triples down and says he converted to islam his name is abu whatever and uh, he's a muslim and that's why he did it so I mean, who do you believe here? You believe Wolf Flitzer, right? Or you believe the San Francisco Chronicle, right? You believe people in San Francisco who are white who have bumper stickers that say end white supremacy. You think that they're sane? Liberalism is a mental disorder. Most of the media is con consists of people who are mentally disordered in my humble estimation. So, no, I'm not going to rely upon anyone in the media to tell me what I'm supposed to think. I'm going to rely upon common sense. So I don't believe this man could have done this alone. That's number one. And number two, I'm hearing theories like you're going to hear right now. Like I said, why would he have done a thing like this? Tell me why. Tell me why a guy, a white guy, would do a thing like this. What's he doing this for? KS of O, Dean, you have a theory? What's your theory? All right, All right you broke up. The call screener didn't uh, do any screening. He was asleep just now. It was like a conductor. But the, the train just ran into the station. The caller was saying he did it in order to be famous. I can debunk that theory in about a sentence or two. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm, I'm asking anyone out there who is a psychiatrist or, a, let's say, a mystery novel reader, why would an ordinary guy do a thing like this and kill so many innocent people? So one theory I'm hearing from people is that he wanted to be famous. Let me debunk it immediately. If he was doing it for infamy, he would have been captured alive, and he would have milked it for every interview he possibly could have given over the next 10 or 15 years. He would have given death row interviews. He would have given newspaper, television, radio. He would have a surrogate write a book and donate the money to the victims of uh, racism, I, whatever. No, that makes no sense. He didn't do it for infamy and then kill himself. By killing himself, it rules out he did it for fame. End of story. What other reason is there? Tell me another reason, because I can't think of one. Why would this monster do this? There's no rational explanation for it. And, of course, the other big story is Weinstein, the Hollywood uh, genius who gave us drug, sex, and rock and roll and made a fortune and laughed all the way to the bank. Uh, now he's being accused of sexual harassment, according to the New York Times. His lawyer says they will sue the New York Times. 
And instead of lashing out at the people who are accusing him of it, uh, Weinstein has lashed out at the NRA and Trump. That makes sense. That shows a very, very sane mind at work, in my estimation. Then there's another subtext of the, of the Weinstein scandal story that the New York Times is pushing. Weinstein backing his feminist attorney's new docuseries. Now, here's something really ironic. Lisa Bloom, in my opinion, is one of the worst people in the history of the human race. My estimation. I think she's one of the worst people I've ever seen walk on two legs. That's what I think of her as an, as an attorney. Now, she's represented dozens of women who have accused men, rightly, wrongly, truthfully, or untruthfully, uh, of sexual harassment. Bill O'Reilly was attacked by her. Donald Trump was attacked by her. It's interesting to me that no liberals ever attacked by women were attacked by her. But now Lisa Bloom has turned her attention to debunking the women who are accusing Harvey Weinstein of sexual harassment. And this creature with a law degree, is now representing Harvey Weinstein. But here's the, here's the rub. Are you ready? She's doing a series of movies, a docuseries, on her wonderful work and her contributions to humanity uh, being produced by Harvey Weinstein. You talk about a, a closed shop. Now, Lisa Bloom is the daughter of feminist attorney Gloria Allred, another prize example of the legal profession and of honesty in the law. As you know, Gloria Alred is above any suspicion as to motivation, and she only represents honest women who accuse evil men, as you well know. And so, mother and daughter, shall we say the seltzer bottle doesn't fall far from the truck. The phone number is 855-407-282. Lisa Bloom sent Law News a statement as a woman's rights advocate. <laughs> I've been blunt with Harvey and he's listened. Okay, I can't even read this. Oh, no, I got to read this. She said, I have found Harvey to be refreshingly candid. He has acknowledged mistakes he has made. He is reading books and going to therapy. <laughs> Come on. Please, I just ate a salmon teriyaki. He is reading books and going to therapy. He's an old dinosaur learning new ways. He wants to reach out to any of the women who may have issues with him <laughs> to talk to them in a respectful, peaceful way with me pres present, if that is acceptable. Oh, come on. You know, there's only so much we can take in one day. He's reading books. A guy who's produced the movies he's produced. We shouldn't believe that Harvey Weinstein came out naked in a bathrobe and seduced women who wanted to be in his movies. Why would we ever believe a thing like this? Why would we ever believe he wanted to give women nude, nude, nude massages to get roles in his movies? That never happened before in the history of Hollywood. There's no such thing. Okay, Bloom is the daughter of Gloria Albert. That tells you where she got her legal ethics genes from. Uh, there's other statements that are being written. The only difference between Cosby and Weinstein is what? Well, I think you can figure out why Cosby got slammed and Weinstein is still uh, no conflict of interest at all between this story, right? You know what I believe. Liberals are godless, misguided hypocrites and sickos. Liberals not only are godless, not only are misguided, not only hypocrites, not only sick, they are mentally the most ill people on the planet, especially those with law degrees. The only people above those with law degrees who are the, these progressives in the progressive field are people in Hollywood who pretend to be anti-gun when every movie they produce has guns and violence in them. No better example of that uh, right now than Sean Penn. Here's a guy, every movie ever appeared in had a gun, an ax, a knife, uh, killing, maiming, b brutalizing, punching. And the next thing we hear, and we're rested for once in Berkeley, all those guns in the back, and every movie he's in. But, but he's a super liberal who uh, wants your gun seized. How does that work? How does that work? How does that even work? I don't understand that. WBRB, Donna, you're a clinical psychologist. Do you agree with me there's no explanation for this man's actions? Yes, Dr. Savage, I completely agree with you. There's no explanation. If you look at the pathology in terms of the man history, where he was able to sustain a living, produce, he was able to acquire wealth. He was able to maintain relationships. There's no way on earth that this man did this. And I agree with you. There's a decoy and there is a what you would call psychological nudity that the public has been given and it's and is, and is embedded in lies. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, the argument that he did it to be famous is crazy because don't you agree with me? Anyone who would do that, a mass murderer, would throw the weapon down and give up so they can milk it for all the fame they could get? Absolutely. And 
the, the point is, is what is taking place right now is the argument and everything that has been formulated detracts from the actual event and the actual rational mind, whereas we're not talking about why would somebody do this, but we're talking about the wrong things. You know, you talk about liberalism as a mental disorder. Jerry Brown signs a bill making California a sanctuary state. If this is not the mark of a mentally deranged fool, I'd like to know what is. First of all, during the Obama tyranny years, uh, and thanks for calling, Donna, during the years of tyranny of Barack Hussein Obama, every time he wrote a new law with regard to immigration, and states uh, disagreed with uh, Obama, Obama and his minions would say, oh, no, you can't disagree with me on a state level because immigration is controlled by federal law. So now that Donald Trump is running federal law, Jerry Brown has the audacity to sign a bill making California a sanctuary state. You know it's not going to be upheld in the Supreme Court. With all the crimes being committed by illegal aliens, with all the grifters coming in over the border, with all of the deceit and the destruction of our way of life being imposed upon us by the illegal alien, why would Jerry Brown sign a bill at this time making California a sanctuary state other than for naked and very, very ugly political reasons, meaning they vote Democrat 100% or 130% of the time. This will not be upheld at the Supreme Court level because federal law is clearly in control of immigration law. It's federal law that trumps state law. Jerry Brown knows that. So all he's doing is grandstanding, trying to get another 15 minutes of fame. Jerry Brown signs bill making California sanctuary state. What does that actually mean? We need more of them here? We need more grifters coming in to take welfare and take jobs? Brown signed the bill just now. Uh, and the bill is blah, 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 who knows? And what are the undocumented? The poor sacred undocumented aliens are now protected. It will bar local jails from holding an inmate for immigration authorities. Oh, that's nice. So if he's a mass murderer, Jerry wants him released. The law also limits the list of offenses that make undocumented aliens subject to having their impending release passed along to federal authorities. So again, Jerry's protecting criminals. Supporters say the policy. Look, I got to tell you something. It's now crossing the line from comedic to criminal. Liberalism is not only a mental disorder, but liberalism is now a criminal mental disorder. And you know and I know that the ACLU does not control immigration law. You and I both know that states do not dictate immigration law. And you and I both know that this new bill by Jerry Moonbeam Brown puts Californians in danger by allowing criminals to avoid deportation and also will jeopardize billions in federal funding. Do you know how many people were released into the population in California that committed crimes after they were released? Do you know that the law exempts the State Department of Corrections and Rehab from most aspects of SB 54, but requires prisons to have written consent from an inmate before allowing federal immigration agents to interview them? So now they're going to go to the foxes in the chicken coop who have just eaten chickens and they're going to ask the fox if the federal officers who want to arrest the fox can interview them thank you jerry that's going to make a lot of people much safer you're crazy this is insane this is very disturbing news by the way for a man to be this deranged signing a bill like this he signed another bill by the way by assemblyman david chu which requires employers to ask for a judicial warrant before allowing federal immigration officials into a workplace and bars, uh, a workplace, and will bar employers from sharing their employees' confidential information, such as social security numbers, without a subpoena. Again, David Chu knows what he's doing here. He's protecting non citizens, he is protecting criminal aliens from prosecution by the federal government. As far as I am concerned, Donald Trump should arrest anyone who protects illegal immigrants who are criminals. And that would include governors and state assemblymen. They are not above the law, and if they are aiding and abetting criminals, whether they're citizens or non-citizens, they should be indicted and tried for the crime of aiding and abetting the crimes that the aliens have committed or will commit upon their release. You agree or disagree? I'll be right back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Savage Nation. Uh, this is a very, very big story that I'm going to get to probably in more detail tomorrow that is unrelated to the shooting or to uh, Harvey Weinstein's uh, alleged uh, incidents. And this is what I've been telling you for years because I'm, a, I'm an expert in the field. Smoking cannabis does make people more violent. Research confirms for the first time that using cannabis is the cause of crimes. Cannabis users more likely to commit violent crimes, research has shown. Study found there was a more con constant relationship between cannabis and violence than between alcohol or cocaine use and violence. Now, more than U.S. more than 20 U.S. states have legalized dope for uh, medical purposes, including, of course, the genius of uh, California. I believe it's more or less legal one way or the other. But cannabis users are more likely to commit violent crime, according to new research. It's very important you know this. Even those of you who are brainwashed into thinking it's a peaceful herb, it is not. It alters your brain. It's linked to violent crime. It's been based on the study of more than 1,100 American psychiatric patients who have assaulted or attacked other people with weapons and those who have raped people. Researchers said that cannabis causes violence, and they found no evidence that the link is the other way around, that violent people are more likely to use cannabis. It doesn't stop liberals from saying, oh, we're a sanctuary state and we want marijuana legalized all part of the madness of our times. I got to go back to one word that may help you figure this out. There's a word in the English language called assassin. There's a drug word called hashish. They're both derived from the same Arabic word hashash, hash, hashashin, which is assassin. Because almost all the assassinations conducted in Arabia over a long period of time were conducted by people who first smoked hashish, which is a form of a very powerful condensed form of marijuana in a brick, a small condensed brick of marijuana, which is very powerful. It would be like condensed, I don't like an espresso compared to a, a decaf. Hashash assassin. And many of you know this. Now, while many American states have decriminalized cannabis, despite it being stronger and more potent than that smoked by your parents in the 60s, the fact of the matter is that it's an extremely dangerous entry-level drug. It hasn't stopped Richard Branson, uh, the group Sting in England, the Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg, and I'm sure there are many nuts here in California and America who think that it's a perfectly harmless thing to make it legal. Do I want to see people who smoke marijuana in jail? Absolutely not. Do I want to see marijuana legalized so that children think it's as, let us say, pleasant to use and as easy to use? as uh, ice cream? Absolutely not. What kind of society do you want to live in? Do you want people stoned all the time? Well, you're living in it anyway with the uh, SSRIs, as I talked about them yesterday, or the anti-anxiety anxiety drugs. I know someone who dated a young woman, and they broke up because she, he didn't know it. She was taking an anti-anxiety drug every time they went on a date. And then eventually she would just hide in her house. She couldn't even go out. It doesn't mean she's a bad person. These drugs are very powerful, psychoactive, very, very powerful. Here in England, uh, over there in England, a cage fighter was a schizophrenic who thought he was God. And when he was arrested for beheading an elderly woman with a machete in England, he told police he had been on cocaine. But tests showed the only drug in his system was cannabis. He was a heavy user of skunk cannabis and thought his victim was Adolf Hitler or a demon in the form of the old lady. So all of you who believe in seizing my guns and that Donald Trump is the devil, you better look in the mirror because you're absolutely crazy. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282.
ISIS releases new statement on Las Vegas shooting. ISIS triples down on the Las Vegas massacre on Thursday. They claimed that Stephen Paddock converted to Islam six months ago. Wait, it gets even better. It gets even better. Are you ready for this? They triple down. His name that they gave him, Abu Abdul Bar al-Amriki. They say he converted six months ago. Well, if you watch the TV show Homeland, where a U.S. congressman had been converted while he was in the military, why is this implausible? Unless you're Jimmy Kimmel and you've eaten too many knishes your whole life and your brain is now nothing but dough between your ears and all you know how to do is make believe you're crying. What do you mean it's not plausible? Because you want to believe he's not converted to Islam because it doesn't fit the agenda of NBC? So who do you believe now? Do you believe the ISIS group about the Las Vegas attack? Uh, indicated the shooter Abu Abdul Bar al-Amriki, meaning this guy converted six months ago. You don't want to know that. This is going to throw the liberal media into a nervous breakdown. They're going to have to go out and get Valium and SSRIs in one combination to go along with the crack that they normally use. Breaking news, ISIS releases new statement on Las Vegas shooting ISIS triples down. Now, if this is true, and I have no way to verify it one way or the other, you know, they're opportunistic. These terrorists are opportunistic. They like to take credit for any kind of terror attack. You know, that's what their religion teaches them, not to build things, not to create things, not to save lives, but to destroy things and take lives. That's the religion of peace. From their point of view, not all Muslims, of course, homily, not all Muslims, of course, believe that, but the extremists who have hijacked the religion take their religion all too literally, and they believe it's their job to blow things up, break things down, stab women in the street, run people over, uh, and uh, shoot people. That's what they believe their religion teaches them. See, this is the way they look at it. Ask them. They'll tell you. That's what they actually believe their religion teaches them. Don't blame me if you don't like it. I know it's uncomfortable if you're on, uh, if you smoke banana peels and eat knishes and make believe you cry on NBC at night. But unfortunately, that's what it says. That's what it actually says. So here we go. I'm not asking you what you believe. ISIS released a new statement on Las Vegas shooting saying, that he converted. They give us his uh, Abu name. I remember I jokingly said when this happened Monday, I hope he's not an Abu job. Here it is. He's an Abu job. So what is that? Let's assume for a minute that ISIS is telling the truth and it will be verified shortly that he was a convert, that in fact up in the room, the sheriff almost gave it away. They found the little Quran job, a little prayer rug they kept out of the picture. I'm taking it to the extreme. The rug was there, not a Confederate flag, but an ISIS flag. Not a Christian Bible, but a Quran. Let's just say that's what they saw, and they were stunned. And the FBI said, put it away. It's evidence you can't show it. Let's just take it to a movie extreme. What does that tell you? It tells you that ISIS has penetrated much further than we believe, including intelligence agencies, which I have been hearing about for three years now from insiders who have been emailing me, saying that they've penetrated almost every agency in the federal government. You haven't heard that yet? Oh, I'm sorry, the guy who cries at night on television and his cousin Wolf Blitzer didn't tell you that, so it's not true. I've been told from insiders that they penetrated the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the State Department, you name it, and they were planted, deeply implanted by Barack Hussein Obama's buddies in all of these agencies, and they're there and they're operating. But that's not, that's not believable, is it? Because you haven't heard it on a nighttime comedian show where he cries in between so therefore it can't be true and who am i to tell you anything big deal so i have a phd from a great university and two master's degrees big deal so i published 30 books big deal that the last five books were bestsellers including new york times number one big deal that you have a background in health and background in nutrition big deal big deal you don't use drugs like we do in the media you don't know anything. We know everything, don't we? We know how to keep the American people stupefied. We know how to spray them with mental raid. They're like nothing but cockroaches to us who we spray with violence and filth every night. So they're so stupefied they don't know what's really going on. Who are you, Michael Savage? Well, you'll figure it out one day, I'm sure. So were there multiple shooters? Well, if we're to believe the ISIS fanatics who have just tripled down and said that his name was Abu Chaim Yankel or whatever, that he converted a number of years ago, a month, six months ago, Abu Abdul Bar al-Amraki, that's his real name. 
Well, if we're to believe the terror group and that he really was a convert, why that means others were in that suite with him. Why that would explain some of the actual soldiers who called this show, who said that this has the uh, fingerprints of ISIS or Al-Qaeda all over it because they faced the same situations in Iraq and Afghanistan while the late night slime was laughing all the way to the bank. Look, I was going to try and do Jerry Lee Lewis, music, lighten it up, food, Teddy. I can't do it. I can't do it. This is getting worse by the second. If this is true, that ISIS, which is tripling down, just came out and said Stephen Paddock converted to Islam six months ago. I know you haven't heard it on Fox News because old Shep Smith has to do what they wrote for him last night. Uh, I realize that you haven't heard about it yet, so you can't comment. And I realize it wasn't on the show that precedes mine across America, which is all about self-promotion and saying how great he is. I realize he didn't have anything to say about it, so you're not ready to talk about it. But I have to talk about it. In Nava 100, hashtag ISIS featured an infographic on slash tag, hashtag Las Vegas attack and indicated the shooter Abu Abdul Bar al-Amriki converted six months ago. I realize you hadn't heard it yet. But you just heard it now, so what do you make of this? On Monday, ISIS released two statements, and now they've doubled down, now they've tripled down. So who do you believe? Um, CNN or ISIS? Who do you believe? Well, of course you believe CNN. They're very reliable. Or you believe uh, Phil Griffin, who runs MSNBC. He's absolutely a reliable source for everything. Do you believe our government is infested with many leftovers from Obama who are actually on the side and playing for the other team, on the other side and playing for the team? You betcha. You betcha. So Trump now has to clean house. He's got to get out the raid and clean out most of the intelligence agencies and even run on a, uh, on a skeleton crew if he has to. Or you could say it was the act of a MAGA uh, madness perpetrated by a fascist Trump supporter. And the NRA was really in the room. There was actually the NRA was in the room with with breech-loading guns and old shotguns. They don't even know what they're talking about. They say breech-loading shotguns. Was it really the work of a MAGA supporter, a fascist Trump supporter, and the NRA was really behind it? That's what you probably believe if you vote for Nancy Pelosi and live in San Francisco. If you read the San Francisco Chronicle line by line and actually believe what you're reading, Big Brother or Little Sister, you probably believe the NRA did the shooting. That's how sick you are. You're the kind of white guy seen in San Francisco yesterday with a new BMW. This was actually sent to me. A white guy in San Francisco with a new BMW getting out of his car with a bumper sticker that says, Stop White Supremacy. If you're one of those people, you probably believe the NRA is behind the shooting. You're that brainwashed. You actually believe you have a newspaper in the city, that it's not a mimeograph sheet of the Democrat Party. So who do we believe, ISIS or Wolf Blitzer? Who do we believe, uh, ISIS or Jake Tapper? Who do we believe, ISIS or stoner comedians on late night television who make believe they're politicians all of a sudden? Who do you believe? Oh, it's all that. It's old white guy. We don't believe ISIS at all. No, sorry, Bob. We need to get those guns away from the white guy so when ISIS takes over, no one can defend themselves. See? Someone writes this and says, no offense, but how do dudes in caves have Twitter and graphic designers? And then another one writes, same way a Puerto Rican mayor in a supposedly a post-apocalyptic setting of desperation and death has brand spanking new T-shirts printed each day. <laughs> People are real stupid, aren't they, Wolf? They can't look right through you. This is frightening. Same way stinking, nasty, American-hating teenagers with their pants falling down and no jobs gets printed signage, brass knuckles, and organized media to hide who they are. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Ooh, someone writes this. ISIS are not in caves. Many of them are in the United States, in Europe, Syria, and the Philippines. Okay, so we had a neighbor on two days ago who said he doesn't believe this guy could have done it. Then we had a caller to the show yesterday who said, Michael, Michael, Michael. He said, I just drove from Mesquite, Nevada, where the shooter's house is located. And Michael, I'm shocked there's no police tape around it. You can walk right in. And I said, God, that's like an old Steven Seagal movie from the 1980s. Remember that one? Where the police disappear uh, as the terror, as the, as the criminals show up from Chicago to execute the cop, the good cop? 
This is so eerie. It's so frightening. There's almost no way to know which way to turn. What do you uh, make of this right now? Vegas shoot a converted. Size has tripled down. PJ Media now, Bridget Johnson. The Islamic State continued insisting that they have a connection to Sunday night's massacre in Las Vegas with the publication of an infographic about the crime filling the second page of their 16-page weekly newsletter. Today's release marks the 100th issue of their magazine, which is distributed in ISIS territories and online via mediums such as Telegram and social media as a PDF. ISIS claimed through their Amrak, Amrak news agency Monday morning that the Las Vegas attacker is a soldier of the Islamic State who carried out the attack in response to calls for targeting co coalition countries. They claimed he had converted to Islam recently. In the new issue of their magazine, the terror group claimed Stephen Paddock converted to Islam six months ago. ISIS persisted in his full court press effort to claim responsibility for the attack after the Amak News Agency claimed with their official Nashir channel and affiliated al Batar Media Foundation, all insisting Paddock acted on behalf of the terror group. They go on. The newsletter used the nom de guerre that ISIS bestowed upon Paddock early in the week, Abu Abdul Bar al-Mriki, the American. The brother Abdul uh, Bar stationed himself for the invasion on the 32nd floor of a hotel overlooking a May Allah accept him, overlooking a concert, and opened fire continuously on the crowds using 23 guns and more than 2,000 rounds and died. May Allah accept him after exhausting his ammunition, al Naba states. Leaked crime scene photos and officials have indicated there was much more ammo in the room. Paddock was interrupted by a security guard, shot more than 200 rounds through the hotel room door, and then killed himself as police attempted to enter the suite. The uh, ISIS infographic states, quote, <clears throat> results of the operation, 59 killed and 527 wounded, a number also reduced Wednesday as officials got a more accurate count from local hospitals. The issue of their magazine released two days ago before the June London Bridge attack, two days bef before the London Bridge attack, warned that another terrorist attack in Britain was definitely coming. On Wednesday evening in Vegas, FBI Special Agent in Charge Aaron Roos told reporters, quote, we have found no evidence to this point to indicate terrorism, but this is an ongoing investigation. We're going to look at all avenues, not close any. I guess they're checking out Janet Reno. They'll go find where she is. Maybe she can help the investigation. Maybe Janet Reno can help you figure out who did it. Or Janet Napolitano, she's not busy enough destroying the University of California. Well, this is not a laughing matter. New ISIS uh, in Vegas shooting claims Paddock converted six months ago. So if you're a fan of um, the show Homeland, where a returning Iraq war veteran who converted secretly in Iraq to Islam becomes a congressman and secretly continues to pray to Allah and uh, plans a major terrorist attack, why is this not credible? Ex let, let's say plausible. Let's say plausible. Credible, I don't know. Plausible, yes. Plausible, yes. Credible, I don't know. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. What's the story that you're talking about? ISIS has tripled down and saying that the shooter, the monster, had converted to Islam uh, six months ago. Paddock converted six months ago, and uh, they claim he has a name. The Las Vegas attacker is a soldier of the Islamic State who carried out the attack in response to calls for targeting coalition countries. In the new issue of their magazine, they say that Stephen Paddock converted to Islam six months ago. They even give him a name, Abu something or other. Abu Chaim Yankel, Amriki, whatever. It says the brother Abu Chaim Yankel stationed himself for the invasion on the 32nd floor of a hotel overlooking a car. I don't want to read the whole thing. So we've been talking about this for a couple of days now that the shooting scene doesn't match the actual event. People who were shot said they heard several guns. I had a woman on yesterday. And she was shot at, so she knows more than uh, the late night comedian who has the brains of a knish uh, as to what actually happened. She said she heard two different gunfires. She claims someone was shooting at her in the crowd while she was on the ground. But what does she know? She doesn't work for Phil Griffin. How could she know anything? She, like, she can't know anything. Even though she was actually shot at, why would she know more than Phil Griffin or even Merv Griffin's corpse? That story is not going away, nor should it. It is the 911 of this generation. You heard me. Mark it down. Michael Savage just said it again. 
What happened in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas. What happened in Vegas is the 911 of our time. Maybe not in terms of numbers of people killed, but in terms of horror and shock. Yes, it is. To me, this story just got bigger, not smaller. Just when the mainstream media wanted to sweep it under the rug and have you focus on the normal sex drugs and rock and roll that they're famous for, uh, ISIS comes out and triples down and says he converted to Islam. His name is Abu whatever, and uh, he's a Muslim, and that's why he did it. So I mean, who do you believe here? You believe Wolf Blitzer, right? Or you believe the San Francisco Chronicle, right? You believe people in San Francisco who are white who have bumper stickers that say end white supremacy. You think that they're sane? Liberalism is a mental disorder. Most of the media is con- consists of people who are mentally disordered in my humble estimation. So no, I'm not going to rely upon anyone in the media to tell me what I'm supposed to think. I'm going to rely upon common sense. So I don't believe this man could have done this alone. That's number one. And number two, I'm hearing theories like you're going to hear right now. Like I said, why would he have done a thing like this? Tell me why. Tell me why a guy, a white guy, would do a thing like this. What's he doing this for? Why would an ordinary guy do a thing like this and kill so many innocent people? So one theory I'm hearing from people is that he wanted to be famous. Let me debunk it immediately. If he was doing it for infamy, he would have been captured alive, and he would have milked it for every interview he possibly could have given over the next 10 or 15 years. He would have given death row interviews. He would have given newspaper, television, radio. He would have a surrogate write a book and donate the money to the victims of uh, racism, I, whatever. No, that makes no sense. He didn't do it for infamy and then kill himself. By killing himself, it rules out he did it for fame. End of story. What other reason is there? Tell me another reason, because I can't think of one. Why would this monster do this? There's no rational explanation for it. And, of course, the other big story is Weinstein, the Hollywood uh, genius who gave us drug, sex, and rock and roll and made a fortune and laughed all the way to the bank. Uh, now he's being accused of sexual harassment, according to the New York Times. His lawyer says they will sue the New York Times. And instead of lashing out at the people who are accusing him of it, uh, Weinstein has lashed out at the NRA and Trump. That makes sense. That shows a very, very sane mind at work, in my estimation. Savage.